There's an interesting discussion happening in the film industry these days. Long-held principles regarding frame rates are being questioned. Some artists are filming at higher frame rates to obtain smoother, more realistic-looking motion. This also relates directly to judder and panning shots, which is the reason that guidelines were established for pan rates. While these techniques try to alleviate the problem, the root cause hasn't been addressed. At the center of these issues is the camera's shutter. The problem lies in the way the shutter exposes the image, and that's where the test of time filter comes in. The time filter is a shutter that works differently from any other camera shutter. It fundamentally changes the way cameras represent motion. Let's look at how traditional shutters operate, and then we'll show you what the time filter does. If we have a scene we're filming, the light from that scene is captured by the lens and focused on the film. If we have a normal 24 frame per second system, a shutter in front of the film rotates to block the light half of the time, so each exposure is only 1 48th of a second long. Because the shutter is a spinning disc with a 180 degree open area, this is called a 180 degree shutter. In digital cameras, the same convention is used. The film and mechanical shutter are replaced with a digital sensor that is only sensitive some of the time. If we want the commonly used 180 degree shutter angle, then the digital sensor will be sensitive to light for a 48th of a second for each frame. If we plot the sensitivity to light over time, we see the sharp transitions from closed to open and back again. The Tessive time filter attaches in front of the lens. If we set the sensor to a 360 degree shutter, it will be sensitive to light for the entire time of the frame. The time filter is synchronized to the sensor, and during the frame it transitions from opaque to clear and back to opaque in a smooth, gradual way. So for each frame, the sensitivity of the camera system fades in and fades out, as you can see in the plot. In both film and digital cameras, the shutter has a hard edge to its exposure. What happens is that it creates a resonance between the camera and the real world. Certain frequencies will resonate with the camera and cause entirely different frequencies to be recorded. The technical term for this is temporal aliasing. To really understand why this is happening, we need to realize that a motion picture camera is a sampling system. It tries to capture the real, continuous world as a sequence of discrete images. Because of this, it can be analyzed using the well-established Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem. The best way to see this is to look at the camera's frequency response. Here's the response of a camera with a 180 degree shutter. It's just a fact of life and mathematics that a system running at 24 frames per second can only reproduce frequencies up to 12 hertz. What we want is flat response in the baseband, the region below 12 hertz. Think of this as the camera's ability to have good contrast for things that blink at different frequencies. A light blinking on and off at 12 times per second will have about 90% the contrast of a light blinking once per second. Above that, in what we call the aliasing band, we want the response to be as low as possible because anything in this band will become distortions and noise in our image. Real world signals up here will get mangled and folded into the baseband. This is temporal aliasing. The standard 180 degree shutter has good baseband response, but quite a lot of aliasing. The 360 degree shutter has less aliasing, but drops a lot in the baseband. That's why 360 degree shutters make the scene look smooth and dreamy. Things moving or changing quickly lose contrast. Take a look at the response of the Tessif time filter system. It combines excellent baseband response while effectively eliminating aliasing. This is the key to better imaging. Just like bracing in a speaker cabinet or shock absorbers on a car, the time filter damps resonant frequencies that would normally cause distortions. This is clearly better mathematically, but what does it look like? Let's see what happens to one of the most notorious problems caused by temporal aliasing, the wagon wheel effect. As these disks start to rotate, the patterns begin interacting with the shutter. With a standard 180 degree shutter, these interactions produce false motions and patterns in the recorded image. With a Tessif system, the motion of the disk is more correctly recorded. It looks like it does in real life. Since we introduced the time filter, industry leaders have begun to recognize that this method of shuttering is one of the most revolutionary changes to the movie camera in its entire history. The following clips compare scenes shot with a normal shutter to those shot with a time filter. While most of these were acquired at 24 frames per second, the time filter's effect is just as important 
and apparent at higher frame rates. We hope that after seeing them, you'll find that this method of shuttering is revolutionary as well.